welcome back my dear students this is mahua sultanaki senior lecturer of malistro college department of biology today i will discuss chapter 13 the name of this chapter is environment around life from my today's lecture you will be able to explain biodiversity types of biodiversity interaction and interdependence among different organisms significance of conserving environment okay Biodiversity. What is biodiversity? The abundance and variability among organisms that are existing on our surface is known as biodiversity. What does it mean? It means that there are different types of organisms that are surviving on this earth surface. There are different types of species. Uh, there are, there are the uh, in between these species, there are some differences in their size, their structure, and the, in other issues. So. Uh, considering all these things, the abundance and variability that is found among those organisms is known as biodiversity. Now, the types of biodiversity. Biodiversity is of three types. First of all, species diversity. Second one is genetic diversity. And third one is ecosystem diversity. Now, what is species diversity? The difference in different issues of a species from the other species is called the species diversity. That means there are some differences in between uh, the, or among the species. That, uh, for example, a deer is distinct from a tiger. In which aspect it is are different from each other in their size, habit, ferocity, their number, mode of reproduction, etc. So it means what is species diversity? The species diversity means the differences or in, among the species. Genetic diversity. The diversity introduced within the organism of the same species is called the genetic diversity. Actually, genetic diversity occurs due to the heredity materials. Due to heredity materials, gene is transferred from one generation to the next generation. It occurs within the same species, but it causes the changes or diversification of the or in between the or among the organisms of the same species so the diversity that is found in between the organism of the same species is called genetic diversity though the the species or the organ the organisms belong to the same species their structure size and ability of various diseases are different okay then the ecosystem diversity the diversity developed due to the changes that occur within the physical, chemical or the organic components of uh, ecosystem is called ecosystem diversity. For example, in case of pond, it has a particular ecosystem. On the other hand, in case of a river, it has also a particular ecosystem. There are different components that are present in these two ecosystems. But in between these two ecosystems, there are some differences or diversification or diversities or variabilities. This is called the ecosystem diversities. So the example is in a small pond ecosystem, the habitats for the plants and animals are different than those in a river ecosystem. Interrelation and in interaction and interdependence among the organisms. Now, what is interaction? The action-reaction that occurs in between symbiotic organisms is called interaction. That means there are some uh, exchange of materials that occurs in between the plants and animals that is known as interaction. I told this definition in my previous class also. So what is interaction? There are two definitions in your book. Uh, one is written in the first part of your book in the introductory uh, topic and uh, another definition is uh, written in this topic that I am discussing. So you can write any one of these two definitions. Okay? Now, the, according to the environmental scientist Autumn, interdependent is uh, relationship is categorized or occurs in two ways. One is positive interaction, another one is negative interaction. Now, what is positive interaction? The interrelationship in between two organisms with the, with the, uh, in which the, each of both the organisms help each other. That is called 
positive interaction. So the definition is the interrelationship in which two organisms help each other is called positive interaction. This positive interaction is divided or again categorized into two groups. One is mutualism, another one is commensalism. Mutualism. What is mutualism? Mutualism is a mutual relationship in between the organisms that take part in a particular relationship or association. So, the association in which both the organisms get benefits from each other is called mutualism. The association in which both the organisms are benefited, that relationship is called mutualism. Now, the example is mutualism. For example, a bee, that is, the, uh, it may be the honey bee or a fly. A bee flies around a uh, around flower to flower for collect, for collecting honey from the nectar plants. When they collect the honey from one flower to another flower, at that time the pollination occurs in between these flowers. In this case, the fly, uh, the bees, honey bees, or the flies get benefited by collecting the honey. On the other hand, the flowers in the flowers, what is happening in that case? The pollination is accomplished. That means both the honeybee or the flower, both of them are getting benefits from each other. So these types of relationship is known as mutualism. There is different examples in are given in our book. Another example is the association in between a algae and a fungi is called lichen. In that case, the algae is getting shelter from the fungi. Uh, by collecting for collecting the water vapor and other uh, gases uh, carbon dioxide on the other hand the fungus gets the carbohydrate types of food that is producing by the algae thus they also get benefits from each other that is another kind of mutual or mutualism re relationship now commensalism what is commensalism this is another kind of a uh, positive interaction in which only one uh, member or uh, in between these two uh, uh, which take part uh, in commensalism or in uh, forming an association get benefits but the uh, what happened to the other the other is not benef uh, get be uh, does not get any benefits or it is not harmed uh, by the another one okay so what is commensalism commensalism the association in which only one organism get benefits or benefited but the other associate is not benefited or does not lose anything is called commensalism. So one of the example of commensalism, a creeper plant. A creeper plant, it is connected with the root or it is anchored in, uh, the root of the creeper plant is anchored in the soil and creeper plant uh, creep up around the big tree. Why it is creeping up uh, around the big tree? For the collection of sunlight, proper amount of, the sufficient amount of sunlight. It creep, uh, creep up around the big tree. But this woody creeper does not depend on the plant, big tree, for providing shelter for its food. Okay. And does not harm, do any harm to the big plant. So this kind of relationship is known as commensalism. Now the negative interaction, the relationship in which or which is detrimental to one or to both of the organisms is called negative interaction. The negative interaction is grouped into three categories that is exploitation, competition and antibiosis. Now what is exploitation? The relationship in which one organism enjoys its rights by exploiting directly or indirectly another organism for it from its rights is called exploitation. Now the example of exploitation. A daughter with the help of the absorbing structure called hosteria collects the food from the plants which has provided with shelter. Now what does it mean? Daughter is a plant-like structure which get shelter from another plant but daughter plant produce a root like structure that is called hosteria after inserting this hosteria to the 
main plant daughter absorb the nutrition from the plant and instead of that the plant get harmed so this type of relationship is known as exploitation now competition what is competition the relationship in which there is a tough competition among the organisms or in between the organisms for light air water or food is called competition in this type of relationship the stronger organism will survive and the weaker one is abandoned that means there is a competition when occurs in between the organisms for their survival okay then antibiosis this is the third type of negative interaction if the definition is if the growth and development of any organism is partly or wholly interrupted by the biochemical substances that is produced by an other organism or by another organism that process is called antibiosis antibiosis due to this reason when the any scientist that uh, discover any kind of medicine um, that is uh, the uh, uh, by the process of antibiosis okay this type of relationship is mainly found in microorganisms the reason behind the discovery of antibiotic penicillin that is discovered by alexander fleming uh, he was keeping the antibiosis along with the penicillin for this reason when uh, he kept the antibiotic penicillin with penicillium in a petri dish or in a culture medium the growth of the penicillium was inhibited due to the production of the biochemical substances or the presence of biochemical substances from the medicine or antibiotic penicillin so that was and in the process antibiosis my last topic is significance of conserving environment why it is significant to conserve the environment we are surviving on the earth surface and it is essential for us to conserve the environment in from the environment we are getting different types of materials for our survival in this environment from the smallest plant or animals to the big plants all are important all are belong to biodiversity biodiversity can sustain or survive without a human being but human being cannot survive without biodiversity if we are not aware uh, to conserve our environment it will uh, uh, be a devastating situation for us how if we cut the forest or we are we don't conserve or the preserve the forest the variation are uh, the, the amount of the variation will be reduced among the plants and animals moreover greenhouse gases such as carbon dioxide sulfur dioxide other will increase because the temperature of the earth surface will increase with this increased temperature the sea level will also raise for which a vast coastal area will submerge under water so what should we do to conserve our environment we should first of all plantation the plantation shouldn't be it shouldn't be for a, a weekly or monthly based basis so if uh, a one a tree is cut then immediately two tree should be two trees should be planted immediately next point well planned urbanization the urbanization should be well planned okay because if uh, the urbanization is done without the plantation properly that will be also a adverse situation on human civilization then uses of solar energy instead of wood we are using wood and cutting down the trees uh, we are cutting trees and uh, using the wood from and uh, collecting wood from the forest it will also uh, create a uh, diversity situation or adverse situation for us so we should uh, use the solar energy by instead of this fossil fuel or woods 
Then second next point is uses of biofertilizer. We are using for uh, more crops or getting more high yielding varieties. We are using a repeatedly chemical fertilizer uh, in our fields or crops. It is it has it has also an negative impact on the soil. How the microorganisms which are beneficial for the soil. It also uh, these are. Uh, eliminating from the soil okay or destroying this the microorganism this chemical fertilizer uh, destroy these microorganisms uh, for, for the excessive use of this chemical fertilizer microorganisms cannot survive in those uh, fields so we should try to use the biofertilizer instead of the chemical fertilizer next population should be controlled the growth of uh, excessive population is also has an adverse in, impact on the environment so the population should be controlled and the community should be well educated okay then the next point is reduction of emission of greenhouse gases we should be aware uh, on the for uh, reduction of emission of greenhouse gases different types of mills and factories are developing in our urban uh, urban area which are emitting uh, greenhouse gases such as I have told you carbon dioxide, sulfur dioxide and other gases which are increasing the temperature of the earth surface. So the emission of the greenhouse gases should be reduced. Then to control the soil erosion of the coastal area. If we plant so many plant, uh, pl uh, if the plantation is done in the coastal areas, the roots of the, so uh, the, roots of the plants will help to anchor the soil with the roots it will reduce the soil erosion in the coastal area then normal flow of water should be conserved by dredging by dredging the flow of uh, normal flow of water can be maintained in case of river and water bodies in this way salinity and waterlogged condition can be removed next measures should be taken to control the pollution how there are different types of pollution it is soil pollution water pollution sound pollution and air pollution these types of four types of pollution can be reduced by increasing the public awareness and finally to follow the international and national principles if the people follow the international and national principles it will also help us to conserve the environment okay so this all are uh, for uh, this all are my today's topic and from my today's topic at first i have discussed the biodiversity types of biodiversity uh, the interaction and interdependence among organisms and finally i have discussed the significance of conserving environment in the next class i will be back with a new lesson till then take care